So in lesson 2.6, we are going to talk about uh, four special functions. Now, as, when you get into a pre-calculus class or even further into this course, we'll explore these functions more than we're going to see them right now. But the four functions we're going to look at are the step function, the constant function, the absolute value function, and the piecewise function. First, let's look at what a general step function and a constant function will look like. A uh, step function that is used most often is called the greatest integer function. And it is designated with these double bars. So if you ever see those little double bars, that tells you that that is a step function called the greatest integer function. Now, what, what that is, this greatest integer function, is whatever x you stick in there, you are looking for the greatest integer that is less than or equal to that number. So to, right to the left of it, what integer is to the left of it. So like uh, uh, 1.5, the integer that's closest to it, but less than it would be, uh, so the absolute, or the greatest integer of 1.5 is 1. So what does that function look like? Well, it has a closed circle at all of the integers. So 0 is 0, 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3. That's the way I kind of start my steps. And then the steps go out and they have a length of 1, but they have a closed circle at their ends. And those steps repeat endlessly downward and upward. It's that same pattern throughout the entire uh, length of the function. A constant function is of the form f of x equals some number. Usually we designate a constant with the uh, letter c. Um, and it will always be a horizontal line. So let's say c was equal to 2. It would be a horizontal line at 2. That is considered a constant function. Now let's take a look at our absolute value function. Our absolute value function is given and designated with um, the uh, straight up and down lines and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Um, the absolute value of positive 2 is also 2. So the effect you get there is a v. To the right of 0, it's a slope of 1. To the left of 0, it is a slope of negative 1. Now, a piecewise function can look, look many different ways. Here's an example of one piecewise function. It is just the connection of different pieces. In this case, we only really have um, our either step functions, our absolute value functions, our constant, and our linear functions to work with. So you'll notice these are just three lines that have been connected. My first piece is x, and we are the line uh, y equals x until we hit negative 1. And then... Let me kind of make this look a little clear. Um, from uh, negative 1 to positive 1, we are stuck at a constant height of 0. And then we are at the line 2x minus 1 for every value bigger than 1. So that's why the function itself looks like it has three pieces. And that's why there's three different equations representing those functions. Those are difficult functions to deal with for students when they first see them. But you just have to take one piece at a time and you'll be fine. So now let's look at, look at an example of each. Let's graph a step function. Now let's think about what the 2 does to our step function. We're doubling everything that we put into there. So if we're doubling it, the steps actually get smaller. So let's plug a few values in to think about this for a minute. Um, at 1 half is where we have a change in step because 2 times a half is 1. So let's plug in halves to kind of see where our steps are at. So let's plug in 
um, negative one half, zero, positive one half. Let's go for one and one and a half. So let's think about what's happening. We're going to plug them. We're going to multiply them by two, and then evaluate the greatest integer closest to that without going over. So uh, negative one half times two is negative one. The greatest integer closer to negative one without going over is negative one. And then zero, and then positive one, and then um, two, and then three. So that can kind of give us some endpoints of our steps. So at zero, we're at zero. At half. At a half, we are at 1. At 1, we are at 2. At um, 1 and a half, we are at 3. At negative 1 half, we are at negative 1. So our steps look like this. They are a half unit in length. And they would continue that process for as down, up as high as you can go to infinity and down as to infinity. So that's an example of graphing a step function. Step functions aren't used a whole heck of a lot, so I would just like you to kind of look and try a few of those examples. Now let's graph an absolute value. Now absolute values are used a little more often, so let's make sure we really understand what happens. Now normally, my absolute value has its point at 0, 0. But that's when my function, it looks like that, the absolute value of x. Well, what happens when we've got this 2 here? Well, the easiest way to kind of see what happens is to set that equal to 0 and solve for x. And this is where your point is. So technically, it's moved everything to the left two units. So when I go to plug in points, I would probably want to plug in, of course, that point to see where it's landing. But I would probably want to point, uh, go one to the left and one to the right of that point. So we're going to plug those in. If I plug in negative 1, I get the absolute value of 1, which is just 1. When I plug in negative 2, I get the absolute value of 0, which is 0. And when I plug in negative 3, I get the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. Let's go ahead and graph those. So at negative 1, we are up at 1. At negative 2, we are at 0. And at negative 3, we're at 0. So you always want to find kind of where that point moves to, and then go from there. So my graph looks something like that. Now let's talk about a piecewise function. The first thing you look for in the piecewise function is where is your borderline? You'll notice that my graph switches at negative 1. So what I always do to help this graphing process work is I put a little dashed border where x is equal to negative 1 because that's going to help me to see what the graph looks like. Now, this is called a piecewise function because there's multiple pieces. So first, let's look at x plus 3. That's just a line. So let's plug in numbers like that are on the left side less than negative 1. So let's try negative 2, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. You will notice that we use this when x is less than or equal to negative 1, so we are allowed to equal negative 1. When I plug in negative 3, I get 0. When I plug in negative 2, I get 1. When I plug in negative 1, I get 2. Now let's graph those. So you'll notice that I put the points on, and my line stops as soon as it hits the border, and because of the equal to, I'm going to color in the end of the border so that I am equal at negative 1 to a point of 2. Now let's look at our 2x. So we've done our x plus 3. For 2x, we want to plug in points that are greater than negative 1. Now, 
when I plug in there, I want to see where that borderline value is. So I'm going to plug that border in, and then I'm going to plug in things that go greater than negative 1, like 0 and 1. So I'm just going to plug those in and multiply them all by 2. And let's graph those. Now remember, they have to stop at the border with an open circle. So at negative 1, we are down here at negative 2. At 0, we are at 0. At 1, we are at 2. So it goes like that. And that's a piecewise function. Here's your assignment. I just need four graphs. I want to see tables. I want to see the graphs shown.